The following video is intended for instructional purposes only and is not a substitute for personal medical care. Please see your health care provider as necessary. A peak flow meter is a helpful device that can help you monitor your asthma. This is a presentation that will discuss the purpose of a peak flow meter, how to determine your personal best, as well as how to set color zones, use, and interpret the results of your peak flow meter. A peak flow meter demonstrates how quickly you can blow air out of your lungs. The better your asthma is controlled, the better your peak flow meter readings will be. While this device cannot be used to diagnose asthma, it can help detect subtle changes that could be a sign of your asthma getting worse. There are many types of peak flow meters, such as the full range peak flow meter and the pocket peak flow meter. Although this presentation will only be discussing the use of full range peak flow meters, the same basic principles can be applied to other various types of meters. Using a personal daily chart like the one on this slide can help you keep track of your daily peak flow meter readings and is very helpful when determining your personal best. It is important to find your personal best because it is the number to which all of your other peak flow meter readings will be compared. Your personal best is a number that is determined by using your peak flow meter over a two to three week period when your asthma is well controlled. During this period, it is important to take peak flow meter readings twice a day at the same time to avoid variability. The meter should be used first thing in the morning and again in the late afternoon. Use your inhalers as prescribed, but make sure you use your peak flow meter before using them while determining the numbers for your personal best. After your personal best is determined, your asthma care provider will develop a treatment plan based off a three zone system. The green zone is 80 to 100% of your personal best. Take your personal best and multiply it by 0 0.8 and 1. Anything between these two numbers puts you in your green zone. This means your asthma is in good control with no symptoms. This is where you should be every day. You should continue to use your regular medications and continue with normal activities. The yellow zone is 50 to 80% of your personal best. Take your personal best and multiply it by 0 0.5 and by 0 0.8. Anything between these two numbers puts you in your yellow zone. This means your asthma could be worsening. Use your medications as prescribed, but contact your healthcare provider to discuss any necessary changes. This should be done without too much delay to make sure you do not have an asthma attack. The red zone means you are below 50% of your personal best. Take your personal best and multiply it by 0.5. Anything below this puts you in your red zone. If you are in this zone, you should get medical advice and treatment immediately. You should also use your short-acting medication that has been prescribed for shortness of breath and proceed to your doctor's office or the emergency room. Now that we have discussed how to determine a personal best in the various zones, the following is an example card that you and your asthma care provider can fill out to remind you of your ranges for the green, yellow, and red zones. On the back side of the card is an individualized medication plan for each of the different zones that you should follow based on your peak flow meter readings. To begin using your peak flow meter, you'll first need to start by setting the color zone indicators on the far right side. Remember that these color zone indicators are based off your personal best. To begin, slide the green yellow zone indicator to the number representing 80 to 100% of your personal best. Next, slide the bottom yellow red zone indicator up to the number representing 50 to 80% of your personal best. After these two indicators are placed, your peak flow meter will be broken into a green, yellow, and red zone. You are now ready to begin monitoring your asthma. If you are confused on how to set up your color zone indicators or aren't sure if you set your peak flow meter up correctly, please ask your asthma care provider for help. 
When using your peak flow meter to monitor your asthma, your reading should be taken after you've used your daily asthma medications. To get a reading, you should begin by removing the top cover. Next, swing the bottom cover down and around and snap the two halves together. to form a handle to hold the meter with. Then, move the red indicator in the middle of the meter to the very bottom of the scale, as shown here. Next, you want to take a deep breath in while placing the peak flow meter up to your lips. Make sure your lips are around the peak flow meter opening and make sure it is not being blocked by your teeth or tongue. The next thing you want to do is blow as hard and as fast as you can into the peak flow meter. Spitting or coughing when blowing into the peak flow meter can produce false high readings, so if this occurs, you should begin again. The number where the indicator stops is your peak measurement. You should take three readings in a row and record the highest reading in a daily record chart or graph. This is an example of a daily graph. It can help you keep track of variations in your asthma. It is also a good record for your asthma care provider to assess and make changes to your asthma management plan at your next appointment. However, please do not rely on these numbers alone. You must also take note of your asthma symptoms. Sometimes, peak flow meters can give you results in your normal zone, but your asthma symptoms can still be present. This could be a signal to you and your asthma care provider that your medications may need to be adjusted. When you are not using your peak flow meter, it should be stored at room temperature in a dry place. It should be cleaned by hand at least once every two weeks with warm water and mild liquid dish soap. It can then be set on a towel to air dry before using again. This concludes the presentation on determining your personal best in peak flow meter use. If you require additional information, please contact your local health care provider.